All right. Uh, this is this is one of the videos where we could either handle this problem in a formal perspective or we could solve it informally. I think that for our purposes, we'd be best looking at it. Let's look at it informally, okay? It says the first five terms in a pattern are shown below. Um, negative negative five tenths, negative 25 hundredths, zero, 25 hundredths, five tenths. If this pattern continues, what, exp what expression can be used to find the nth term? The nth term. So, um, like, let's suppose n was uh, the third term. So, you know, could one of these expressions, could we use, what expression here could we use to find the third, the fourth, or the fifth term? Um, I, uh, let's look, let's look at the, let's look at these terms. The first term is, is a negative five tenths. Uh, the second term is a negative 25 hundredths. Look at the third term. The third term is zero. I like working with zero. So let's suppose n was three. Let's say we were looking for the third term. Which one of these would give us the third term? Let's see. Because I'm thinking that if it gives us a third term, it'll, it, we could probably use it to give us the fourth and the fifth. So let's suppose n, let's suppose n is three. All right, we'll see if we can let n be equal to 3. It would help if I could actually talk. Suppose n was 3. If n was 3, then we're looking for the third term. So I am actually looking right here. All right, that's what I'm looking at. That's supposed to be an arrow. That hardly looks like an arrow. This is a little better. So, so I'm looking squarely here. Uh, which one of these, if I let n be equal to 3, I should get 0. I should get, so, uh, I'm just doing basically this testing the answers. So, uh, let me write that statement what I just said. If n is equal to 3, then I should get 0. All right, so so we're just going to test these. We're going to test these out with n, with n being equal to 3 and see if that gives me the third term of this sequence. I could have also tried 5 or 1. I could have tried those, but uh, I'm thinking that if I tried 0, then I think maybe a couple might work. If I try one, I'm thinking more than one of them will work for zero for one. So I'm going to try three because uh, zero is pretty easy to work with. So look what happens if I let n be equal to three. Well, if n is three, would a give me zero? This would be 75 times. This is 75 hundreds times three. Well, that I would need that to be 1.25. That's what I would need. If I multiply 75 times 3, I'm going to get way more than 1.25. So, no, A doesn't work. Okay. What about um, B if N is equal to 3? Uh, if N is equal to 3, then I will get 3 times 25. That will be 75, negative 75 hundredths. That won't cancel. If I subtract another... 25 from that, that won't work. That won't give me zero. If n is 3 here, I'll get 0. 0.75 minus 0. 0.75. That looks like that might actually work. So I'm going to go ahead and underline that one differently. Okay. I like that one. And if n is 3 here, what happens here? We'll get a negative uh, 1. Well, well, 5 times 315. So we get a negative 1.5 minus uh, plus 25. Either way, that's not going to give me zero. So we do know that if it's going to be the nth term, it should work for any number. And so uh, the only logical conclusion, if n is 3, this is the only one that works. It doesn't work for any of the rest of them. So uh, that's one way we could do it. We just by substituting the n. Uh, if that went over your head, let me give you another way to see. Let me see if I can make it visual. 
okay? Like, let's, uh, let's get rid of these lines here, okay? Because uh, this is kind of a new topic for us. So if I can just, let's see, let me, uh, oh, wow. I got a lot of stuff going on here. Let's just, let's see. I, if I could, yeah, let's move this, let's move that, let's remove, not that. Let's see, grab that line there. And let's, uh, I should have, all right, let's do that. Okay, let's keep that here. Just going to look at another way in which I could have uh, done the expiration there. Okay, let me get rid of some of these. Let's see if it'll let me multi select there. Uh, anyway, uh, again, suppose n is 3. Some of you may be lost on what I mean when I'm saying n is equal to 3. That means I'm going to substitute n equals to 3 into each one of these expressions. And uh, yeah, that's I can do it that way. So, like, let's suppose uh, n is equal to three, and I'm gonna just do a substitution here. So, that means zero point seventy five, okay, times. Now let n be equal to three. This is what I was talking about a while ago. Minus one point two five. If that's the case, so I need to look at that. Let's look at another one. Then uh, that's A. And let's look at B. I'm going to calculate these one at, uh, I'm going to calculate these all at the same time. So 0 0.25. So I want that zero there. I want it to look exactly the same. 0 0.25. Also that times three. Again, I could have chosen another number, but I, I went with three because I want that correct answer will give me zero. And that's why I want to use n is equal to three. Okay. And let's look at uh, zero point two five. And remember, we've already so far shown that this is the correct answer. So we should get our results should match up here. Okay. That's C. And let's look at D. All right, 0 0.5 times 3, all right, plus uh, 0 0.25. Again, if it's going to fit this sequence when n is 3, n is 1 here, n is 2 here, n is 3 here. Let me just show that. n is 1 there. Let's see. Uh, n is 1 here. Let's see, let me go. So keep in mind that n is one there, n is two there, n is three here, n is four here, and n is five. So these are values for n for our sequence. So look what happens when n. So all we're doing is just testing which one of these works. So if I let n be equal to three, look what happens. Okay. All right, if I simplify that, oh, where did my answer go? Uh, my answer is, hmm, where did my answer go? I thought I had an answer there. Let me try again. Um, simplify numerically. All right, oh, my answer was one. So yeah, one, I didn't see that. So there I get a one when n is three. Okay, did it twice. Okay, let's look at this example, right? And if I simplify that, all right, here I get a negative one. Okay, let's simplify C. Here I get the zero, because when n is zero, when n is three, I should get zero. And then let's do the last one just for yucks. And see, I get that. So only one of them gives me zero when n is equal to three. So that's why the correct expression right there. So that lets me know that the correct answer is this one right here. So we just did it two ways. Well, this was kind of messy, but I think you get the point there.